Okay. Hi, everyone. It's fantastic to be here. My name is Miriam. I'm the founder of Hebor and Quoka, an anonymous messaging exchange designed to increase the mental health of founders, it is the first digital product that we're bringing to market. Here's why. One third of founders are clinically depressed and entrepreneurs in the United States have a higher rate of suicide compared to other groups. Meet Robert. Robert is a visionary. He's working on making his dreams a reality. He's motivated, creative, and well-connected. He's doing his best to do it all, but he's human and that comes with real human needs and challenges. He's a leader in his communities and his organization. Therefore, he lives a pretty public life and feels pressure to be active on multiple channels and appear to look like he knows what he's doing. He never knows who's watching and is living during a time when it's taboo to talk about mental health. Leaders of today are under public scrutiny, which stifles growth and lack of growth is detrimental to a founder. Although Robert is well-connected, has a community that supports him and has advisors and mentors that he could talk to, that requires a big commitment of time and mental energy. His success requires him to learn new things and be happy, healthy, and well. When he's not happy, healthy, and well, it's not good for his team and others around him. This causes anxiety because he cares about other people. Founders like Robert are motivated by solving problems, accomplishing goals and tasks, and helping others. Quoka is a safe place for founders like Robert that desire to achieve a state of self-actualization. Through Quoka, Robert can help others, get support from a network and community that understand him. Using Quoka, Robert can express himself, be understood and listened to, plus it doesn't require a huge time or mental commitment. It's easy. Here are some of our core features. First, the community is comprised of like-minded people. All interactions are anonymous, so no matter what you want to say, you don't risk being exposed, feeling stupid, or judged. Since all communication is done through text, you don't risk getting sucked into an endless stream of distractions like other social platforms. Lastly, learning. Our website of resources is curated by the community and from a thoroughly vetted ambassador program. This is how Quoka works. Once a member joins the club, they are able to send messages to Quoka. Quoka analyzes those messages and makes sure they get routed appropriately and sent out according to the member's preferences. Members can choose to engage as little or as much as they want. No reply is ever required. Founders were struggling before and now after the COVID pandemic, the need for Quoka will only grow. I've gone through testing three MVPs and last month I launched the fourth iteration. Here's what some of our members are saying about using Quoka. They're grateful for us putting it out there. It's been lovely, even if they don't manage to do it every day. They're thankful for the labor and creativity we took putting it together. People have said they needed it badly this morning. And a last note, what a wonderful end of year gift. While I identify as an artist, I'm also an entrepreneur and it warms my heart to see the impact that Quoka makes in people's lives. As a millennial who has always had technology in her life, I feel that the apps we use are not always created to support our humanity. Things have gotten out of control. I'm committed to solving this problem and building from a people first perspective. Up until this point, I've been a solo entrepreneur. Working with the team this year has brought many challenges, but overall it's been great. I'm in week six of the Navigate.Capital Bootcamp here in Miami. My team is conduct conducting extensive user research leveraging my existing communities, which is also pushing new user acquisition. I'm forming strategic partnerships all while building in public, which has been wild to say the least. We have a very low cost monthly membership fee. Anyone can join Quoka and start using it today. We offer a monthly and a yearly subscription plan. Thank you so much for your time and welcoming me into your chapter. I'm eager to hear your feedback and comments. Awesome, thank you so much. I like that presentation, very, very, uh, flows very nicely. Uh, so we'll start with Eric, his question, he wants to know, do you think part of the pressure founders face is exacerbated uh, by the whole social expectation of being successful and, and hustling? Yes, I do. I think that it's a challenge these days to build in stealth mode. 
you're almost expected to build in public. Uh, your team is out there on social media, even if your profile is private, you'd never really know someone can screenshot it, put it out there. All we hear in the news are these stories of like this founder rose raised a million hundred dollars and you know this and that. So it's a lot of pressure. And I even hear from founders that have been at it for a really long time. Just last night, I was speaking with founders that were you know, 20 something plus years into the journey and even they still feel pressure. So it's not like it goes away once you reach a certain level of success. Yeah, good point. Uh, another follow-on question, how does this program work? Are we having conversations and sharing ideas with each other uh, or providing words of wisdom? We don't define <clears throat> that. You really can't have a conversation through Quilka uh, because the messages, you don't know who they're going to and uh, you don't know who sends them, but it's a conversation within the community because the messages are all going out and sh being shared within each other. You can also ask questions, you can share your feelings. Uh, during a first iteration, we said we would prompt people during the onboarding process to send kind messages and we took that away because we want Quoka to be a safe place for people to share whatever they're feeling, even if it's negative. Where Quoka is kind of like that little holding zone, you know, like if you're in, uh, if, let's say you're having a bad day and someone tells you like, go punch a pillow, <laughs> right? Quoka can be that place. It's like your digital pillow, like you can express yourself and we probably won't end up we don't send that message out to the community. Quoka analyzes it and says, okay, like let's stuff that little negative message into a box and, and let's respond to them. When someone sends in something negative, we actually, actually respond with Quoka, which is an acronym for question, you okay, answer. So we prompt people then to answer how they are and we want to engage them in conversation around what's going on with them. And from there, people from the community can say, you know, I resonate with that. I feel that too, or I've been there before. Here's something that may help you, et cetera. Okay, I think, yeah, I think you just spoke to the next uh, question about how do you ensure others don't give bad advice? Uh, so that's, that's, that's really cool, that's important. Uh, Ruber says, interesting, I've been meeting with fellow entrepreneurs about this, supporting each other through the BS that others don't have a clue about, uh, kind of like leaning on each other, so he's, uh, Mark has a question. He's wondering how this improves mental health. Uh, do you have evidence to support this effectiveness? Are there studies around this? Well, so far we're basing that claim on feedback from the community. During this next launch of the MVP, we're coming up with what we're calling the MHS, which is going to be unique to Quoka, something that we are creating. It's a mental health score. And so we'll have more like concrete statistics on how Quoka itself does. But you can kind of think about it like that feeling where maybe someone does something random that's nice for you and it makes you feel good. And you end up going through the rest of your day feeling really great. And maybe you end up smiling more at other people and they start feeling great. Um, these micro moments is what we like to call them of positivity as they compound over time are better for you. Like you just feel better more often, even though it's like maybe a minute a day that you feel better. That's one minute of a day that you didn't feel not good. Nice. Uh, Christian's question is, uh, are most of your users local currently, or are you finding a high percentage of users are around the, the nation or the world? Some of our earlier MVPs, we were using WhatsApp and we had people from all around the world that joined. Uh, this latest is uh, using a US and Canada based messaging in the back end. So only people in the United States, but not locally only. They're from all over the United States. Uh, we do get at least that piece of information um, when they sign up, it tells us. Okay. Uh, Scott's question since it's totally anonymous, can conversations or relationships be fostered in any way? Is that possible? Eventually, potentially online uh, or everyone chooses a handle when they sign up. So you can choose to use a, a handle that you use publicly. Um, 
or maybe you meet someone at an event and you're like, oh, I use Quokka too. Oh, my handle says, oh, I got your message. That could happen randomly like that. And, you know, I look forward to the day that two people meet in person from Quokka and have been enjoying each other's messages for a time. But right now, no, we make it completely anonymous. Okay, nice. And uh, Rupert says, uh, regarding the presentation, he didn't quite get your elevator pitch uh, or the true value you know, over what we're already doing, which, which he knows you offer. Um, and animations were nice. And can you maybe just address that, uh, the, the elevator pitch you're using or the true value of what you're doing? Yeah, the, is it just the anonymous aspect that's the most unique or mm -hmm. what would you? I would say it's a safe place. Quokka is a safe place and we don't, we build differently. Let's say you go to um, Reddit, for example, also anonymous, recently come to know this platform. You could go into a board and you're there talking away, but there's a lot going on and you could easily get sucked into another conversation that can become very negative and it can drag you down. Quokka is not built that way. We're not measuring how long you spend on our app. We're not looking at how much you engage. We're there to support you. Even in those situations of social networking or even in person, you may not ask a question that you need to know the answer to because you're surrounded by your peers. And at the end of the day, our community opens opportunities for us. And if our community, although for me, I, pref I have found more value in being vulnerable, it's taken me a long time to get there. And er especially earlier entrepreneurs may not be comfortable with that. It's a whole fake it till you make it mentality. Imposter syndrome is something that's very real. So if you ask a question, you risk putting yourself out there looking like you don't know what you're doing. Um, you, sometimes if you're a solo entrepreneur, you can't even go to your team to talk about these struggles because then your team will lose faith in you. So we look at ourselves as supplemental to founder communities like One Million Cups or you know, the entrepreneur happy hours that come together. Um, you may be in, in Quokka with other people that you know, but you don't know that they're there. You don't know that they asked a particular question or, or they're struggling. Um, we're like that stepping stone to letting you be vulnerable in a safe place. And hopefully through time, people will become more vulnerable outside of this. Uh, I think it's important for people to talk about their mental health and it, for it not to be taboo. Yeah, those are definitely excellent points when it comes to founders uh, and safe space. I do like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I just have a quick question. Is there a uh, particular intellectual property here? Or in other words, I, I guess, how do you defend this from being du easily duplicated? Because it is so simple, right? Mm -hmm. uh, have you thought about that? Is this a first to market thing, a branding? What, what's your approach on that? Yeah, I have thought a lot about that. And Tibor, uh, our mission is very clear. And my purpose in life as an entrepreneur is very clear. We are conducting all of our user research in public. Every single one of our interviews is available for anyone to watch. We make our service available to people that request it, uh, excluding, of course, any identifying information. That would be fantastic if someone else came along and solved this for me. I would love that. Please do make it a safe place in our world where people feel mentally safe and happy and well. Mental health score will be proprietary to HEBOR and other things that come out of a research potentially could become proprietary as well. But Quoka is a product of Hebor, and it really is kind of an initial first step that I would like to see achieved prior to building other things on my entrepreneur journey. We need places for people to feel safe. I want our world, everyone, animals, humans, to feel safe in our world. Uh, and we don't right now. So if anyone else wants to go ahead and do this first, please. Go right ahead. I have no problem with that. I've got plenty of stuff to do. And I've spent a lot of time talking with other founders that are working on very similar solutions to Quoka, whether it's the anonymous part uh, or the mental health aspect. 
Awesome. So very mission focused. I like that. Uh, can you, uh, Tim's asking, can you give a few examples of what you have seen texted? Yeah, yesterday was quite an active day. Uh, one of our members sent in a message about it being a new moon, <laughs> which I don't think a lot of people would know about the moon cycles. So uh, that was sent out and the community was asked if they wanted to know more because their message was pretty lengthy. It went through like what a new moon is, what it means for you and had an activity associated with it. So uh, the members that then said, yes, they wanted to learn more, got all of that information and then were asked if they wanted the activity to go with it. And, you know, from there you see some, some don't want the activity, they don't reply, but uh, some of them did. So we sent that over and it was really just a fun little exchange that happened on Quilke yesterday, but we get a lot of inspiring quotes and um, people just commenting back like, that's great, or thank you, little short messages in response. Nice. Uh, Mark would like to know, how do you make money? We charge a very low $7 per month or $70 for the year. And we've changed our pricing model several times over the launch, the different MVPs, but this is what we're charging right now. Okay, and Joey has a question. Uh, where can I see these other videos? The videos are on YouTube. Yeah, I'm happy to send a link to that in the chat. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm catching up here. There's so many messages. Uh, Rupert, Rupert has a question. Is this a message that resonates with entrepreneurs? Um, I've worked with thousands of entrepreneurs and they're more matter of fact. Uh, they're concerned about having a safe place to express their feelings. Wondering if there's a better way to message this that would attract them. Uh, what kind of response have you been getting from your focus groups and MVPs? Everyone seems to say that it's very interesting uh, the idea. I have thought about not using the words mental health in our messaging, as I think maybe, yeah, it could be a barrier to people that really do need the help. But um, I was advised in my boot camp that for now to get as much traction as possible, it's easier to convert people that are aware of mental health and want to be in a safe place that are aware of it. And then from there, potentially moving on to others. I wonder if coining a new term, something like entrepreneurial health, because what percentage again of entrepreneurship is mental, is uh, mental toughness and focus and all these things that uh, we're, we're taught. So I, I don't know, but that's, that is interesting. That's a good point. Uh, Scott's question, uh, do you collect any demographical user data that might help grow the community or potentially develop more support resources? We do collect it, but we're not doing anything with it right now because we just don't have the resources. But we, we know through this messaging platform that we have their age, their, where they're located, their gender designation. Um, that's what we have, yeah. And in our first user research survey, we collected a ton of information like their political affiliation, <laughs> their race, um, a bunch of questions. And a lot of feedback came from the people that took that survey that our survey was extensively long. We almost got canceled on Reddit actually. <laughs> <laughs> from asking a lot of the questions people were like don't ask these questions you're part of the problem and so we were like okay we'll change our survey um yeah interesting wow uh Rupert wants to know what's your target what's your specific target market can you narrow it down beyond just entrepreneurs solo entrepreneurs i say would probably be the narrowest that we're at I mean, and that's taken us a while to get here. We were targeting before this boot camp. I was looking at single moms, veterans, founders, 
and like anyone who I called energy workers, which would be like doctors, first responders, massage therapists, coaches, anyone who's working with other people to help move their mental mindset. Um, so narrowing it down to founders, we've gotten a lot narrower than we were before. Got it. And Pamela agrees with your approach. She says exactly attract the ones interested, repel the ones who aren't for you. Uh, don't ever give up on the messaging that makes you different. It will resonate uh, with who it's meant to. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, is there a, is there a, what is your ideal exit strategy? Or is there one? Is, is this, uh, what would you like to see happen long-term here? Yeah, I would love to have my team grow. Um, they're very young. I work with interns based out of the school system here in Miami-Dade County. They are all, they're all earning, uh, as they contribute, they're becoming, it's kind of like a co-op method. So I would love to find a founder that I mentor and that is extremely passionate about Quoka and step into a board of directors position and have them run this company um, and let them go ahead and, and grow it with, with my guidance. Um, that could be a potential exit strategy. Of course, I look at this as something with other revenue models where it can be used in organizations as a way to foster retention and um, create safe places for employees. Um, I see it as a culture tool for organizations. Um, I would love to see it used by a, like the suicide prevention hotline, complimentary to their services. Um, I would love to see this used by our veteran support networks um, as a way to amplify and show appreciation for veterans. So I'm, I'm looking at exit. I mean, sure, exit is exit, but I'm really in this right now. I'm really excited to see what happens with it. I've got a lot of ideas I wanna roll out and execute. So yeah, I see, like, I definitely think it could exit, maybe it go public, but right now I just wanna kind of like mold this baby. Got it. Very, very nice. Uh, so I'm going to send the last question over to Mr. Eric Deckers. All right. Thank you. Great job, Miriam. Uh, I did have one other question. What is your own background in mental health and entrepreneurship? I have been a entrepreneur full-time, 100% pursuing my passions of going into my fifth year. So I'm very familiar with the ups and downs. This last year in particular with, with COVID has brought extreme challenges. And I kind of was like, wow, universe, um, what do you got for me? Let's go. Um, but I have the tools from a very young age to, 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 to deal with my mental health and, and put it first and make it a priority. And through my communities, I've learned that that's not something that everybody has been gifted. Um, so that's my own personal experience is just being a founder, having experience with the challenges, the ups and downs and having the tools to work through them. I can't imagine if I didn't have those tools. Um, so, yeah. Okay. All right. I was just curious. Uh, and then the final, final question is, uh, what can we as a community do for you? Yeah. Thank you so much for that question. I'm going to pull back up my, I have a slide. I've got a slide for that. Right. <laughs> um, oh, where did we go here? Oh, so these are really the, the wonderful ways that I feel that the One Million Cups community can support. If you're interested, if you're a founder and you'd like to participate in a user research interview on video, this is a live interview where you talk about your mental health, you can schedule through the Calendly. Uh, you can take our survey. We have a, a survey that 
is also anonymous asking you about your mental health. If you'd like to become some sort of an ambassador with us, definitely reach out. And I would love to know in the chat out of these features, which one, if any, hopefully one of them really excites you. Okay, great. Could you drop those uh, two links into the chat? That way people who save the chat uh, can access those later. Yeah, let me grab those. 